But first, last night, Maine learned that Travis Roy has died at the age of 45. As a kid growing up in Yarmouth, he dreamed of playing Division I hockey in college and then going on to the NHL. It was October 1995, just 11 seconds into his first game with national champion Boston University. He crashed into the boards and became paralyzed. From that day on, Travis Roy worked tirelessly to help others with spinal cord injuries through the Travis Roy Foundation, encouraging others, especially students, to have compassion and goals. In the spring of 2016, he was inducted into the Maine Sports Hall of Fame and received an honorary degree from his alma mater, Boston University. 207's Caroline Cornish talked with him when he went to speak with students at Kennebunk Middle School and asked him what those accolades meant to him. It, they're very nice honors. Uh, you know, last week I was up in Maine for the for the Hall of Fame, and it's also especially special for me because I I know I haven't played sports in 20 years, but I still identify myself as an athlete. And and, and I realize, I mean, I, my 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 true athletic career was a bit short, but I thought it was kind of neat to to kind of recognize the kind of things I've done beyond. And, and over the past 20 years, is it hard to get people to maintain the interest? and enthusiasm for your cause, given that the start of this is so far away now? Uh, it's, surprisingly, it's, it, it, it's almost gotten easier. Um, and uh, I'm not sure why, I think maybe there's more credibility that it wasn't just kind of a, uh, kind of a flash in the pan, or I right, started a foundation, the Travis Roy Foundation, and every year we, we pretty much raise more money. Um, and I think it's, uh, um, I'm getting a little older, a little wiser, and smarter in how we do that, but, um, but I also think a lot of it has to do with the track record that we built. I mean, we, we fund significant research at, at major programs across the country. Um, we've provided um, you know, multiple millions of dollars, three or four million dollars in individual grants to you know, the, the wheelchairs, the ramps, the voice-activated computers. Um, it's incredible what people can do these days with disability if they have the right equipment. Do you think people have come a lot farther in understanding people with disabilities and in sure. appreciating people sure. for who they are inside? Um, I, I think we've come a long way and I, I think in in terms of everything, I, I um, whether it's whether it's, you know, gay people or, you know, transgender and or people with disabilities or um, ethnicity or um, I, I feel like the that we we're doing society's becoming much more open and much more um, willing to to understand and Maybe even if they don't understand that it, it's not a big deal. Even if they don't understand, you know, there's not quite as much uh, judging, or, or, or uh, which which is which is great. You talk a lot. We were at a middle school where you were talking to students about setting goals yes. and and moving forward with those goals. One of your goals for a long time with the foundation is to make it possible for people like you to walk again, to play sports again. You haven't reached that goal yet. Yeah. Is it hard to maintain hope over this kind of time? Uh, it's been challenging. Um, it has been hard to maintain hope. It's been frustrating that the progress has moved faster. Um, uh, f 20 years ago, anything short of walking and playing hockey again um, was just not going to be good enough. That I, uh, that was what a quote unquote cure was for me. Um, I will say uh, 20 years later, uh, yes, I'd like to walk again. I'd, I'd like to end paralysis as we know it. And, and I think we will, um, uh, but in my lifetime, I, I don't know. Um, and that's quite frankly a little depressing to even admit to that. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, I can tell you if I could just be independent, if I could move my fingers, if I could move my arms, if I could get myself dressed, if I could um, drive, um, what, for me, a, a cure would be functional independence. It may be pretty ugly, um, but if I don't have to have 24 seven home care, um, people in my house, um, if I don't have to rely on my family and my friends to help me with some of the, the things that I need help with, um, that would that would put a pretty big smile on my face. There will be a generation that doesn't know what paralysis is, mm -hmm. and I cannot wait um, for that to happen because there are a lot of people um, that don't have 24-7 home care, that don't have the financial means that are really struggling and, quite frankly, suffering. One of the things you do when you come to these schools is you show your story to the kids so that they can relate to you, so they can, you, and you can relate to them. Absolutely. I say this knowing you and I are just about the same age. Is it harder to relate to kids than it used to be? 
it's uh, <laughs> it, 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 a little bit, um, but but not a whole lot. I mean, and uh, to 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 sit in that uh, gym today, um, I'm very aware of um, whether or not I have the kids' attention, and uh, those kids were great in there, um, and they were listening. And as long as I can. Uh, be in a room like that and feel like uh, they've, they're connected to me. It, it still feels really, really good. Um, absolutely. What is your goal when you're in a room like that? What, what do you want to, when you leave a school, what do you want to be? I, I, j I just want them to think a little differently. I want them to um, be a little more open-minded, mind to not be so judgmental, um, to, to come away with a couple values, to think about what pride means in their life um, and how it can play a role in their life. Um, I, you know, s setting goals, it's very cliche. Um, but I, I am a huge believer. I saw how it played a role in my life before my injury to get me where I was, and I've seen how it's played a role since. Um, um, a lot of the things I talk in there are very simple, very basic, but I, I try to apply them to both my life as an athlete and, and realizing some pretty neat goals and dreams, and, uh, but also how that they can play a role in your life, um, no matter what the challenges are that you face. So, so I, I just want to make them real those values, and, and they've heard everything that uh, before, what, what I shared, but, but hopefully this, I, I shared it in a different way that maybe less, left a little bit more lasting impression or, or, or just gets them to think about them. That conversation again conducted in 2016, and as we mentioned, Travis Roy died this week at the age of 45. And you can certainly find more information about his foundation, the Travis Roy Foundation, on our websites. Really great stuff that he's continuing to do now. And we'll be right back.